In this video, I'm going to tell you how to choose a sleeping bag. 15, 10 plus 5 factors to consider when you're purchasing one of these down or synthetic fill beauties. I'm going to give you 15 different things to look out for and be conscious of, and I'm going to save the most important factor for last in this video for you. The first factor you need to consider is the temperature rating of the sleeping bag. How cold can your sleeping bag take you down till and still keep you warm and comfortable? Take for instance, this is a Western Mountaineering Megalite. This is rated for about 20, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Compare this to the Western Mountaineering Puma. This is rated for about minus 20, minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, these two bags are substantially different in how much down and fluff and everything they have. There are a lot of other fabric differences, but that is the first thing you need to consider when purchasing a sleeping bag. Now the key is whatever the lowest temperature you think you're going to need to sleep in, subtract 10 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius off that to give yourself a good rating. So if you need to sleep down to say zero degrees Fahrenheit, you want a minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit bag. You don't want to be at the absolute limit because that could cause you a lot of problems down the line. The second thing to think about is do you want a down sleeping bag or do you want a synthetic fill sleeping bag? Most of the time people go with down because down is more efficient for weight for the amount of warmth you get, meaning for the amount of weight you have to pack around on your back, you'll get more warmth out of a bag than synthetic. The big factor is if you expect your bag to get wet constantly, synthetic might actually be for you because synthetic bags can actually keep you warm while you're wet versus traditional knowledge says that once your down sleeping bag is soaked, it's not going to keep you warm. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm freezing. So down versus synthetic and also a down insulation tends to last longer over the years compared to a synthetic fill insulation. This bag is 20, 20 plus years old. This bag, let's see, I've had got this in 2007. So 15 plus years old, still trucking along just fine. The next factor to consider is what is the shape of your sleeping bag? The sleeping bags that I always get are the mummy sleeping bags. And if you can envision a mummy coffin, like one of those Egyptian or Sumerian jobs, that mummy shape is the most efficient sleeping bag in there because the sleeping bag simply covers your body and no more. There are two other designs. One is a tapered rectangular where it looks kind of like a mummy, but it doesn't have the nice shaping that curves in past your hips. It simply is a rectangle at top and then cups in like a trapezoid. The third type of sleeping bag is the rectangular. The old school sleepover when you're seven years old, buy it at your fav favorite big box store like Walmart, Buy Mart, or whatever mart you might have. And those are the least expensive sleeping bags to go with. They do definitely do have some downsides, but often the cost is highly attractive. The next factor to consider about sleeping bags is how they fit your body. When you're wriggling into your sleeping bag, if you're a very big person and you're pushing out and mushing your sleeping bag too much, you'll actually freeze and be very unpleasant or have a very unpleasant night. So even though you spent 700 or like 600 bucks or 900 or a thousand dollars US on a sleeping bag, you can actually still be cold because if you're a very big bulky person and you mush the sleeping bag, it'll definitely not work well for you. So fit, meaning the girth around your body is a major consideration. Also, the length of your sleeping bag for fit is a major factor too. I'm six feet tall and I always buy my fat bags at six foot six because I don't want my head squishing exactly against the sleeping bag because that'll actually create a cold spot or it'll actually start mushing my feet on the bottom of the sleeping bag and creating that cold spot as well. So I always make sure to give myself six inches or that's about 15 centimeters 
of extra space for water bottles or clothing or gear or whatever I need to jam in there. You do not want to have an exact fit on your sleeping bag because if it's cold, you have to put extra clothes on or something, that can be very unpleasant. The next thing to consider is the side of the zipper. Are you a right-handed zip person or a left-handed zip person. Sometimes you don't have a choice and the manufacturer you are looking at might not give you the choice at all. But you can see on this sleeping bag here, my Megalite, that the zipper is on the right-hand side. It's simply a right-handed side zipper on the sleeping bag. But on my Puma bag, the zipper is actually on the left. Now, why did I go with one versus the other, well, that is simply because that's all I could find at the time. I bought these a long time ago before Amazon and all that sort of stuff where you can actually order things. By the way, I'm going to put links below to these sleeping bags and how to keep your feet warm in the cold. That's a great book on over a hundred different techniques I wrote on how to keep your feet warm when you're camping in the cold. So oftentimes, sometimes you just don't have a choice for left or right handedness. It really uh, doesn't bother me which one because usually like uh, this bag is right handed. I'm only going to be in this bag a day or two, maybe three for a short backpack. But this expedition bag, I'm gonna be living in this bad boy for a month. So my left or right handedness doesn't bother me, but maybe it bothers you. So that's something to consider as well. The next thing to think about in your sleeping bag choices are your fabrics. This is an extreme light fabric where its goal is to be as light as possible while still being sturdy. Now this bag has lasted me 20 plus years and I think I finally put a tiny little hole in this thing somewhere and I just patched it up and it's no problem. So the extreme light fabric is very nice but you do have to be a little more cautious with it. The microfiber type fabric is also very good. It's a little bit heavier than this extreme light type fabric. Uh, they're both uh, okay for water repellency, but if you get water directly on them, it's gonna almost just go straight through. If you really expect that you're going to need to, <clears throat> excuse me, handle a lot of water or moisture, then you're going to want to go with a expedition weight gore windstop type fabric where it's much more water repellent. That is not to say waterproof. Water still permeates through this fabric. That's just how it is. Now, uh, it's just, you know, three options, the extreme light type fabrics, the microfiber, which is very common, and then a gore wind stop. You have to think about where you're going to use your sleeping bag and what conditions you're going to use your bag in. Do note that you can't just get one bag for everything. Does this minus 20, minus 25 degree Fahrenheit bag that weighs uh, something like four pounds. Is that gonna work for my summer backpack in the Sierras? No, it's ridiculous. So you just gotta think you might have to have one more, one sleeping bag over time if you're going to do things the old fashioned way, which is tough it out. The next factor to consider on your sleeping bag is, uh, let me put it up the other bag here is, is there a protective strip inside of the sleeping bag to help prevent zipper snags? When you look at the construction of the sleeping bag, you'll see in here that there is a stiffening strip in this Western Mountaineering bag on the inside, and that helps you prevent from snagging your zipper because so often in the inside of this fabric it'll get hung up and then you'll yank on it and then you'll tear your bag so these stiffening strips on both sides of the sleeping bag are a very nice feature to look for when you're looking at sleeping bags and evaluating if they're right for you the next thing to think about is the design of the hood or even if the sleeping bag has a hood at all you can see both of these mummy sleeping bags have a nice hood that completely surrounds my head and will keep me super warm. The tapered bags, the tapered rectangular bags, and the rectangular bags often do not have a hood. You will have money savings and weight savings for those factors. But if it gets really chilly, the hood is a very nice feature. So that's something to think about there as well. 
The next factor to consider when you're looking at sleeping bags is does the bag have zipper baffles? And what do you mean by that, Aaron, you might say? Well, a zipper baffle is an extra tube of down or synthetic fill that actually fills the space where you close the zipper on your sleeping bag. This Expedition Weight Puma bag has a complete baffle all the way down to the base of the zipper. That is a very nice feature if you think you're going to be out battling the cold. Compare that to, let's see, my Western Mountaineering. Ha ha ha! My Western Mountaineering Megalite sleeping bag. This bag actually has a down baffle in it as well. So even though it's a summer rated bag, oh, you know, it's not really good for expeditions. The Western Mountaineering bags are super expensive. I mean, check out the link below on the Amazon. You'll see how expensive they are. But even in their ultralight summer series bags, they actually still include this down baffle, which prevents that cold leakage from the zipper on either side of your body. So if there isn't a down or a synthetic baffle in your sleeping bag, you might think, you know, that side's always going to be cold. How am I going to deal with it? So even though a bag with a baffle on the zipper might be a little more expensive, when you're sitting there freezing in the cold, you will happily hand over your credit card or write a check and say, please end this. Now, in expedition land, a, the next factor to look at is, do you need a neck baffle on your sleeping bag? So there are zipper baffles for the zippers that go, or the, to cover the zipper. But in this sleeping bag, you'll see that there is no neck baffle. There is just simply the fabric, the down, and then you. Cons compare that to my Expedition sleeping bag. The Expedition sleeping bag actually has a fully separate neck baffle in here where you can draw the cord and create basically a neck hood and choke yourself out and then seal the bag up so no cold air gets into your body while your head is in a completely different space in your bag. The neck baffles are traditionally found only on expedition weight and cost sleeping bags. My Megalite is not meant to be an expedition bag. I mean, definitely not. It has the nice zipper baffle, but it does not have a neck baffle. So if you're going to somewhere really cold like Denali or I don't know, the Arctic or somewhere where, you know, you're going to hit minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 28 degrees Celsius or something like that. The neck baffle is a very nice feature to have that will help keep you warm, especially in that drafty environment. The next design consideration to look at is the baffle design of the bag itself, how the tubes of down wrap around the body of the bag. In my Puma bag, the down cannot move from the front of the bag to the side of the bag to the back of the bag because this is an expedition weight bag and you don't want to have the down shifting around inside. Compare that to my Megalite bag. This actually has a continuous baffle system where the tubes that hold the down here actually wrap all the way around the sleeping bag. Now that reduces cost, it reduces weight, and it actually gives me more flexibility because I can actually take this bag and if it's a little too chilly, what I can do is grab the back of the bag, whip it and begin driving the down onto the chest area of my bag and actually warm my bag up substantially. The converse to that is if it's summer and it's still 85 degrees out, I'm sleeping somewhere where I'm almost dripping sweat, I can actually take this down and begin whipping it around and drive the down through the baffles onto my back where I lay on it and mush it. And I can actually adjust the temperature rating somewhat on this sleeping bag. So even though this bag is rated for about 25 degrees Fahrenheit or thereabouts, I've taken it down to five degrees. It wasn't an enjoyable night, but the ability to fluff that down and drive it onto my chest made all the difference in me having a comfortable night. It was a little cool, 
but I definitely survived as well. Another factor is in sleeping bags is, is, the, <laughs> is, is, is their inability to slide your sleeping pad into the actual structure of the sleeping bag. The big Agnes series of sleeping bags actually has an entire sleeve on the back of the sleeping bag where you can slide your mattress in, whether it's a foam pad or an air mat or like the big Agnes air mat. Check out links below to that as well. And that way you don't slide off of your, your air pad or your foam pad at night and stay on the ground, maybe give yourself frostbite or have a cold night. That ability that Big Agnes gives you is a huge bonus for people who thrash around. Now, just be aware that if you like to roll or side sleep, rolling or side sleeping in a mummy style bag is a bit of a challenge because you'll end up with your face jammed into the hood like this, and then you're gonna have to twist the hood around to breathe while still staying on the pad. So for me, I don't like that design, but I've known other people who like to camp and the Big Agnes sleeve system totally works. It's a really nice feature that makes a lot of difference for a lot of people. Then uh, let's see, uh, sleeve for sleeping bag. Okay, three more things to go here. Booyah! yeah. The next factor to consider is do your sleeping bags actually zip together? Western Mountaineering a six foot six bag. This guy, if I have a right zip and a left zip, all of these zippers are the same. Even though they were manufactured years ago and on different lines, I could literally zip up this right side, or was it the right side Western Mountaineering Megalite to my left side Puma bag. Totally crazy, doesn't make any sense. But if you wanna snuggle with your lovebird, the ability to zip together bags is really nice. And also look at the how far the zipper goes down on the sleeping bag. Don't get a sleeping bag that zips all the way around the bottom. It, it, that's a waste. That adds extra chance for cold spots. It adds extra weight and chances for failures. These are a 7 8 or thereabout zipper where the last foot or about 30 centimeters on the bag doesn't have a zipper, you don't need that because the coldest place on your bag is always going to be on your feet. So that zip together option is nice, but don't get the bags that zip around. Just make sure the zipper stops here and you won't have any trouble with that. And that is uh, the second to last factor is these zippers, make sure they don't go all the way down and check out other things like drawstrings and cords. Uh, make sure that the cord can cinch up so it can completely envelop your face and watch my sleeping bag fall down. You know, do this sort of thing so you can sleep there. Some sleeping bags actually have pouches where you can stuff things at night. There's all sorts of options. I prefer a traditional straight up sleeping bag that doesn't have a lot of other, uh, what we call foo fa because Oh, where, where am I gonna put this? I, I just pile my junk inside of my sleeping bag, sleep there and deal with it. I don't want extra sleeves or anything because, well, what if the sleeve isn't in the right place? And now I gotta fight with it. I don't wanna fight with it. But for some people who like to ferret things away and bundle up like that, it totally works. So that is another consideration. And now at the end of the video, the most important consideration when you're looking at sleeping bag is Literally, what color do you want? Now, some people, hey, don't click away yet. Some people say, oh, the color doesn't matter. That's a silly thing. To some people, it really matters. If you're a hardcore North Facer, you want that red North Face bag. That's just the way you want it. If you're a Mammut or Marmot, you want that blue or the uh, Feathered Friends are blue. Western Mountaineering comes in all sorts of colors, but traditionally, the color of your bag is usually tied onto the series of the bag. Often, most manufacturers won't make five colors. Uh, maybe Rab does, but you know, colors for some people is a really big thing. So if you want to be super expedition, it's always going to be a red bag. 
Uh, me, I don't care. I've taken this bag in to Greenland. I've taken this bag and going to go to Greenland, taking it to Denali, taking Yellowstone in the winter, which is like minus 40 degrees. So it's nothing to sneeze at. So there you go. Those are 15 factors of how to choose your sleeping bag and all the different things you want to consider when you're looking at a sleeping bag and listening to my computer ding like crazy. Please check out the links below to my book, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, and also the link below to my upcoming book, How to Camp in the Cold, that tells you all these things and more to keep yourself self warm, comfortable, and safe in the outdoors. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please like and comment on the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your sleeping bags.